In the next few videos, I'm going to be talking about lines within triangles. The one that we're going to start with here is mid-segments. A mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a picture of a triangle. Uh, to make things a little bit simpler, for the next part, what I'm going to do is measure off a couple of the sides here. I'm going to make them very particular lengths. I'm going to let that one be seven. That'll be seven centimeters. And another one, um, go ahead and make it different at least. Let's, let's go with eight. Uh, not too different, but at least uh, I've shown you that it, it could be a different size. So I've got seven and I got eight, and I'll need to remember those for a little bit later. All right, and I'm gonna close off the triangle, just like this. The length of that, that one is probably not gonna be perfect, but uh, we get about, we get about 12.2. Okay, so I'll be able to work with that later. All right, now by definition, a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides. Okay, so I'm gonna look at these two sides over here, the ones that I had set at seven and eight. So I'm gonna take their midpoints. This was seven. That means the midpoint is at 3.5. So I'm gonna mark that off. Okay, and I'm gonna go over here. This one was, this was eight. Midpoint will be at four. So that would be the midpoint. And I'm gonna connect. Gonna connect these two. All right. And by definition, that is a mid segment. All right, a few things I could go ahead and do here. Um, well, a couple. Um, this segment right here is gonna be congruent to that one because that was a midpoint, so I wanna add that in there. Over here, I'm gonna put single markings in that spot and that spot because this is also a midpoint over here. Okay, I can't use uh, singles for all of them or doubles for all of them because, you know, this was 3.5, this was actually just four. Okay, but that is a mid segment. All right, mid segments, they have two properties. They have two properties that we want to identify. Okay, two different things about them. And what I want you to do is take a little moment here just to look at that mid-segment, to look at that segment here, look at the whole triangle, and see if you can figure out, and this would be inductively here, see if you can figure out what properties this has. Again, there are two of them. All right, so two properties that mid-segments have. The first is gonna be related to the length of the mid-segment. Okay, so let me go ahead and take a measurement of this. We're gonna see that that looks about, that looks like it's about 6.1, about 6.1 centimeters. And if you remember earlier, when I looked at the base here, this appeared to be 12.2. What that means is that this mid-segment is actually half of the length of the other side. And that would be one of the properties that is absolutely true. We're looking at this inductively, we're drawing a picture and we're measuring. It seems to be true, but it is true. This will be something that is true and we'll be able to use. All right, the other property is gonna be based off of angle measurements that we get, okay? But then it's gonna translate into uh, something just slightly different. All right, so if I were to take, take a protractor, measure the angle, uh, we're going to have to sort of estimate here because it's a bit short on that part. Actually, let me just go ahead and uh, just briefly here extend out the line. I think that might work. All right. So if I measure that angle, it appears to be at a little bit short of 40, maybe 38, maybe 39 degrees there. Okay, that's about the angle measurement that I'm getting right here. Here's to be that angle measurement. All right, if I take the protractor and measure over here, Sometimes these are tough to get centered. You're gonna notice it is also just short of 40, maybe around 38 or 39. So this angle measurement that we get is actually congruent. Okay, again, we're doing this inductively, but it is true. These are gonna end up being congruent to each other. Likewise, these two angles, these will end up being congruent. Okay, they are gonna be different sizes though. Go ahead and maybe show you one of them. Uh, this, this is gonna be close to round 30, just slightly over 30. All right, but they will end up being the same size. All right, what does that tell us about the mid segment? We have these congruent angles, but what we're really interested in is this segment here. So having these congruent, what does that tell us about that segment? Well, if you sort of look at the placement of the angles, 
you might recall these as being corresponding angles. We've got a couple of lines that don't extend that direction, but we do have a couple of lines and you have a third one crossing it, which we can call a transversal. These end up being corresponding angles. They're both like the top right. If you had a full intersection here, that would be the top right. So if these corresponding angles are congruent, that would tell us that the mid segment is parallel to that third side. Okay, so our two properties here are that the mid segment is half of the length of that line and the second property, it is parallel to that one. All right, in addition to that, here's a neat thing that we can do. Okay, in addition to that, we can take the base of this triangle, we can break that up. All right, so that'd be at about 6.1. We can break that up and you could make a, another mid segment here. You could do that. Okay, and then that mid segment is gonna be half of the length of what we have over here. Recall that that was four centimeters. You'll see that that's also four centimeters. And um, I'm hesitant to mark too many things here, so I'll just say them. It is half of the length of that side and it is going to run parallel to that side. Likewise, we could put a mid segment here and that should be 3.5 which we see and is half of the length of this side, plus it will be parallel to that side there. And if you take a step back and look at the picture that we now have, we actually end up with four congruent triangles. These are four congruent triangles. We could put double markings here to match those. You can put a single marking here to match those. And then we could even do triple. We could do triple markings for these and we get four congruent triangles. All right, let's officially state the mid-segment theorem. It has two parts here. The segment connecting the midpoint of two sides of a triangle is parallel. It is parallel to the third side and it is half the length of that side. Example one, triangles are used for strength and roof trusses. In the diagram, line segment UV and line segment VW are mid-segments of the triangle RST. All right, so UV is right here, uh, VW is over here, and then we're outlining this triangle RST. All right, so we are asked to figure out what UV and RS are. That would mean what are the lengths of those segments? Recall from our theorem, that a mid-segment is gonna be half of the length of the side that it runs parallel to. All right, let's see what we have here. VW is 57 inches, and VW was identified as a mid-segment. So if we look at the, the big triangle that we have here, VW is gonna be running parallel to SR. That means from S to R, it would have to be twice as much as uh, 57, which would be 114. And we are asked that one, there we go. RS is just gonna be 57 times two, which will be 114 inches. All right, so that's one answer. Uh, what else do we got here? RT is 90 inches. RT is 90 inches and UV, the one that we're looking for here, that would be a mid-segment as well. Um, that was stated above up here, that is a mid-segment. So it will be half of the length of the 90. So UV is gonna be 45 inches. All right, and that's it. All right, for example two, we're gonna do a problem that is much more algebraic than what we were looking at in example one. We have a picture of a triangle that has all three mid-segments drawn. We do know that these are mid-segments because points A, B, and C are gonna be identified as midpoints, okay? All of these are midpoints, which by definition, if you connect them, is gonna give you a mid-segment. Okay, so we have all three of them in there and recall that because of our theorem, these are all gonna be congruent to each other. All right, let's see what they tell us. AB is three X plus eight and that is a mid segment that we got there. GJ is gonna be equal to two X plus 24. We're asked to figure out what AB is. Okay, so that means that we need to figure out what X is. Once we have that value of X, we could just plug it in here and everything is good. All right, so how do we set up an equation? All right, let's suppose I just took the two expressions. I took these two and I set them equal. Let's just suppose. All right, so this, this is false, that's not true. 
these aren't equal because AB, which we, we can see here, is clearly not the same length as GJ. They aren't the same length. However, sometimes starting with a bad equation is actually a good idea because it gets us thinking about how things really compare. These can't be equal because this is half of the length of that one. So you can do one of two things to fix this. You could either double up this side right here. You could just multiply both terms by two. That would make it fair. Or if it's possible, you could actually just divide this in half, which in this case you could do because both of these are even values. Now what I'm gonna do is double that side. I'm gonna double that side because sometimes when you get a question that would be like this, the factors that we have over here might not work with what we need, like cutting them in half. So if I had an odd number, I wouldn't wanna go that route. But this route would always work. This would always work for us. Okay, so I'm gonna distribute a two in. We get six X plus 16 is equal to two X plus 24. We'll subtract 2x, okay? 4x plus 16 is equal to 24. We can subtract the 16. 4x is equal to 8. Divide by 4, x equals 2. All right, not the answer overall to the question, but that would be the value of x, which we can then plug into AB. All right, so then 3 times two plus eight is gonna equal 14. All right, and that is our answer. All right, and of course what you could do is you could plug the two into this expression, right? And then see that you get uh, twice that value, you get 28. Two times two is four, four plus 24 gives you 28 and everything seems good. Wait, there